Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm testing OBD11 diagnostic interface designed for Volkswagen Group cars. Actually, I was testing it for a couple months right now and to be honest, I'm pretty impressed with it. It's small and light, has a very simple shape. I think that's the smallest OBD scanner that I had in my hand so far. In fact, it's so small that uh, it's easy to forget it in the OBD2 port and leave it in the car. So they made it with this keychain-like design, which helps you see it under the dashboard and makes it easier to disconnect it from the diagnostic port. For the device to work, you need to download an uh, Android application and the app requires internet connection. The first time you use it, you will most likely see an update message for the app, uh, the interface firmware or both. I believe those updates are required if you want to use OBD11 and you cannot skip them. But on the other side, why would you want to use outdated software anyway? Our first diagnostic job is perform full scan. We are in Volkswagen Golf Mark 7 GTI and I happen to know that there are some issues with the car, so let's see if we can find them. We can see how many fault codes we have in the car in total. You can press and hold over here to clear all faults or go to detailed view and check each individual module for its faults and code descriptions. Green means that there's no faults in the module, red means there are faults stored and black means that the module is not responding. When checking faults stored in a single module, you can see that the code can have green or red edge on the left side. Green means that the code is temporary and you can clear it easily and red indicates that this is a permanent fault and there's something wrong with the car that needs to be fixed before you can clear the code. If you ever use tools like VCDS, then you will be very happy to know that in the Pro version of the app you will find functions like coding and long coding, adaptation, output test, advanced IDs and so on. And if you want to change coding, you can switch between bit and bytes view and more descriptive view which shows a list of options and available values hiding the unknown settings. App keeps all the information about changes you make and the previous settings so we can go back to original coding or review changes that were made. This is a very nice feature since the device is, in my opinion, very powerful and you can make your car electronics inoperable if you go crazy and or stupid using it. This helps you go back to original state if you need it. For those who don't know what is long coding, adaptation channel or are simply afraid to damage the car, there's a boolean alternative called apps. The idea is that you can adjust or enable some popular features with a single click. For example, I use it to enable video in motion in Audi Q7. It was done in a few seconds and costs 100 credits. Of course, you don't have to use those apps and spend 100 credits on it, but you will have to spend some time to learn how to enable video in motion the traditional way, which includes reading the MMI module serial number, then using pin code generator to get the pin number for the MMI head unit, and then adjusting specific channel to a specific value. So if you don't have time for all that, or you are just afraid that you can mess up something by mistake, you can use one of those apps that will do all that for you. You can buy credits or get them in exchange for watching some in-app ads. I've tested it in Audi Q7, uh, Audi A38L and Volkswagen Golf Mark 7 GTI. Worked as expected with all above and uh, was a huge help, especially with the Mark 7 GTI. It was made for US market, then shipped to Europe and I needed to change some regional settings like um, display units, uh, supported uh, radio frequencies to make the car ready for European roads. And of course, I enabled a lot of cool features like needle sweep, um, lap timer, side mirror dip in reverse, windows control from the key fob and few others. When trying to connect to Volvo V50, I instantly got a connection error message. Sadly, it does not support universal OBD PIDs, so it will not work in cars other than Audi, Volkswagen, Seat and Skoda. OBD11 interface is compatible with Android devices at the moment. I believe that iOS support is one of the most requested features and I'm sure that the OBD11 team is considering making the iOS app, but still today OBD11 works with Android only. Ok, to wrap it up, small and clean design, very handy, you can keep it in your glove compartment or under armrest at all times, very powerful in pro version, really great VCDS alternative, perfect for home and semi-professional use. 
change history that is stored automatically, great help in fixing your car if you mess something up, and a lot of supported languages in the application itself. Overall, I do recommend OBD11. If you want to learn more, go to obd11.com and if you want to buy one of those, you can use the link in the description below this video. Thank you for watching, give me a thumbs up if this video helped you, subscribe to my channel for more reviews and tutorials for your car and see you soon.